I'm Bart Loser, and I am the program director for Toastmasters District 55's continuing education program. I've developed a program just recently to help our newer Toastmasters understand where to go next once they've paid for their membership and they've signed on board to Toastmasters International. Where do we go? Well, I'm going to be presenting a program in four parts. This particular first program will be part one, new member steps. We're going to focus on those initial steps to take. I want to first congratulate you on becoming a Toastmaster. That is your first big step. As Abraham Lincoln once said, the best way to predict your future is to create it. Joining Toastmasters is that first really big step that can take you a long way. We'll be covering in part one, understanding this program, especially using the Navigator document, which has a little bit of everything that you could want to know. Acting on what are known as SMART goals, we're going to talk about what that is, so you set goals that will be bound towards success. We're going to also talk about the Toastmaster's promise, something that a lot of people don't realize is actually the last thing in the contract where they sign their name, what they're promising to do to give back to the club and to help themselves be the best they can be. We'll also focus on understanding your club's expectations of you and suggestions to maximize your experience as well as the best resources for success. We'll start off with the Navigator, which is one of the first documents you'll run across when you sign on to Pathways. It's one of three options that you always see when you open up the Pathways program in Toastmasters website. Now, the Navigator is a 21-page document that you can download or can be electronic, and it's an overview of all the basic information that you need to know for a club meeting, the club structure, how to make the best out of this program. What you'll see in here is Navigator chapters such as the benefits of the program, meeting structure, and roles. We'll also focus on club officer roles and duties, understanding the Pathways Education Program from the very beginning, also evaluation methods and tools, and achievement recognition, which is so important to have that sense of accomplishment as you move forward in this program. And the last three things that are focused on in Navigator is the mentorship program, speech contests, which you'll notice should be coming up soon, and you might wonder, why do people get involved in contests? But lastly, Toastmasters, where leaders are made, it's all about servant leadership and how you can give back to others as well. In addition to the Navigator, you might want to think about what are your goals, which you might have thought about before you even joined Toastmasters, such as, what am I going for? Without goals, you're not going in any particular direction. You're just out taking a walk. If you want to walk in a certain direction and achieve goals, you have to think about, what am I going for? Well, when you set goals, you want to make sure that they are going to be successful. And there is a method in, that's been around for a little over 30 years, most of you have heard of, called the SMART method for establishing goals. The SMART meaning S-M-A-R-T. All goals should be very specific, not vague at all. If I were to say, oh, I just want to be healthier this year. What exactly are you saying you want to do? To What is being healthier to you? Be really clear what that is. And those goals should be measurable. You should have some way to measure, where am I? Am I halfway into my goals? Am I three quarters of the way into my goals? Am I establishing it under some sort of a particular way I can measure how I'm moving along so I can know that I'm making progress? The A in SMART is attainable. Don't set them so high that you just can't even reach them. They need to be reachable as well. And they need to be relevant to what you're going for. If you set goals that are not going to end up getting you where you want to be, then they're not relevant. So make sure that the goals you're setting are very relevant to what you want from Toastmasters or in your life in general. And lastly, goals should be time bound. You should have a time when, when am I going to start it? When should I be halfway done? When should I be done with it? Have some way to know exactly where you are throughout these, this whole project. So set SMART goals so that you will have that chance to succeed. Another important factor in succeeding in Toastmasters is getting yourself a mentor. Mentors offer encouragement, guidance, 
support, and inspiration. Turn to your vice president of education, or perhaps they've got a mentor committee, someone in charge of the mentor program, to assign you a mentor who can work with you for three to six months or through a certain part, like level one or level one and two of your particular program as you move forward and learn. Always make sure you've got some people who've got the experience who can help you lead through it because sometimes the program is not as intuitive as they'd like it to be. Having someone you can turn to to, to suggest, what do I do here? Where do I go next? How does this work? Mentors can help you. Also, the club itself is here to support you. So be sure when you're new to Toastmasters that you're asking the right questions, such as what specific help do you want from us as your officers or other club members to help you meet your goals? And do you want to set your own time frames, or do you want us to nudge you along? You know, some of those little birdies don't ever fly unless you push them a little bit out of the nest into their uncomfortable or discomfort zone. A lot of people don't want to go there, but in Toastmasters, that's what it's all about, is stepping into your discomfort and doing it anyhow and learning from the experience. Sometimes you need people to nudge you along the way. So find out what type of support you need. Also, as a former scout, we made promises to our, to our troop, as well as promises to ourselves. Keeping those promises are vital in terms of demonstrating that what you say matters. Make sure that you keep your promises, but a lot of people don't realize when you join Toastmasters, you made some very specific promises of what you were going to do to commit to this program so that it works for you. If you don't commit to the program, I can't really say that it's going to work for you, but if you keep your promise, that was on the third page of your membership application, down at the bottom where you sign your name is the Toastmasters promise. You might wanna revisit that to see what you've promised to give to your club and of course, what your club can do to support you in making sure that happens so that you will be successful. Keep in mind, the Toastmasters promise is important. Now let's talk about club expectations, what the club expects from you and some recommendations that I might offer you. First of all, you might learn about your particular club's policies and standards because each club is different. They have their own culture in many ways. Also, you wanna learn the process to RSVP your attendance to meetings, which is very, very helpful for those who are planning the meetings, the Toastmaster or the Vice President of Education, to know if you're planning on going or if you're not going. That way, we can know whether to count on you and whether or not, if we have some open roles, where we might be able to assign you, or you might be proactive and claim your roles ahead of time, which is an easier way to be prepared for making that successful. Also, Focus on giving a prepared speech I'd recommend about once every one to two months. If you really want to be making progress, you should be thinking, if it's been two months and I haven't given a speech, I need to sign up for one and then turn to Pathway Projects to see what I'm going to do next. But always make sure that you prepare your speeches according to the Pathways Projects. These are very specific educational learning projects that build on each other. And although you can choose any of these projects without going in any particular order, going in the initial order is a good, helpful way, especially if this is your very first path, I would suggest following all the level one speeches before you start the level two speeches and projects, and then finish those before you start level three. But you can move around if you'd like. You just can't complete a level until you've gotten all of the projects done in that particular level, even if you've got some done in the upper levels at that point. And you want to write out your speeches fully as best as possible because you're going to be doing a lot of editing and use an outline. I know that many of you, when you start your icebreaker in that project, they offer you a speech worksheet, which you could actually use with any speeches you make that help to guide you through all the points that you want to make and how all your transitions and everything you want to do to create and construct a great well-planned speech. But write it out fully because that way you can go back and make changes later. Don't just keep it all in your head there. Also, 
meet with your evaluator prior to giving your speech. It not only gives them a chance to get familiar with what you'll be delivering so that they don't have to spend quite so much time trying to figure out what is this, where is he going? Uh, you might just share with them what your speech is, even practice your speech with them so that when they hear your speech, it won't be the very first time that I've heard her say that and I realize, oh, I know what she's going for now because I've heard the speech before and now I can look for the best ways to support her. So help your evaluator out by working with them prior to giving your speech. And lastly, consider giving speeches multiple times. The best speakers have given their speeches over and over and over, but they edit the speech and get feedback on those speeches each time. If you have access to Zoom, which they even have free accounts, you could get on Zoom and record yourself and even watch yourself so that you could actually then see what your body looks like, what your positioning looks like, what your lighting, what your sound is, and practice your speech so that you can keep working on it and sharpening it. So, and you should give your speech perhaps many times in your club life. Now you'll give them for different purposes, but use the same speech sometimes. I would say if come up with five or six basic speeches and give those over the next year. That's a great way to hone these skills because it's not about the speech itself, it's about how you improve the speech and your delivery of that speech. We have lots of program resources that will help you along in your Toastmasters journey. First, I want you to make sure to turn to your club officers as some of your best, most experienced resources. Also, your mentor can be an excellent resource to help you or any experienced Toastmaster they can help you in getting this done. Toastmasters.org has tremendous resources, sometimes almost too many resources. But what I would suggest doing is go to the Toastmasters.org page and learn what's behind each of the tabs that are up at the top of the homepage. There is so much information just in that alone, you can get tremendous knowledge and help from almost anything you need to know about Toastmasters just on that home page behind those tabs. Also, if you have any particular problems, Toastmasters has one of the best customer service agents anywhere you can imagine. Always be willing to call Toastmasters International's telephone number to get assistance if you need help with your club, membership, or whatever it is. Any question you have, you could get answered on the phone by them as well. Also, your district has tremendous resources on their websites. Now, many of it's tied to the Toastmasters.org website, but if you go for District 55, our district, TMD55.org, Toastmaster District 55.org, it has tremendous resources as well. And you might want to familiarize yourself with that because that's how they communicate changes, updates, and information to you that can be extremely helpful. Also, Almost any question you might have, you could just do a simple web search. It's amazing how many individuals and clubs and districts have come up with tremendous resources of their own that they make and then share to others in Toastmasters. So almost any question you might have could probably be found by just doing a simple web search. Also, your club might have a website and that gives you lots of opportunities where not only can you offer feedback that can improve the website, because it's all about offering feedback. So you want to evaluate, is this really helpful for me? And make sure that that website is shaped into something that will help you as a member. So always be willing to give feedback for your club's website improvement, but you want something that will have some helpful answers for you there as well. Now, many clubs have a Facebook page, an Instagram page, a LinkedIn page, many different types of ways in which they communicate with people. Get to know these resources and how to best use them to help you. Your club may also have a newsletter. Our district has a newsletter. Toastmasters International has a newsletter. They even have monthly magazines that you can access on the homepage of Toastmasters.org. And those go way, way back. So lots of great articles and learning opportunities that you can get from the Toastmasters magazines, which these articles are just written by other Toastmasters. So you can learn a lot from others. And find help from anyone in your club. 
Your, just your friends from Toastmasters can help you. Almost anyone in the Toastmasters organizations can help you to make the best use of this program. So to the Toastmasters.org homepage to learn as much as you can about understanding how to make the best out of this program. The Toastmasters website has tons of great information that are out there. It can be a little intimidating, but once you learn by logging in and looking at all the tabs and information that's available to you, including you could find other club meetings because once you're a Toastmaster, you can go to any meetings anywhere. And given that most of these meetings are still being done by Zoom or they're hybrid meetings. You could go to clubs anywhere in the world at any time of the day. You just need to find a club. And if you go to one of the smaller clubs, you could even walk in there with a speech or sign on and say, hey, I've got a speech I'd like to give. I noticed you guys only have one speech today. Would it be possible to give a speech and get it evaluated? And there's a good chance you can do that with the smaller clubs. So take advantage of all the great opportunities that Toastmasters has to offer you. Once you sign in to the Toastmasters website, you'll notice the welcome your name there. And you could actually go up there and click on that and you could see your Toastmasters profile. Inside your profile, it gives you such information on how to go to your base camp to get your to Pathways programs. You could choose a new path if you wanted to add another one, although every time you finish a path, you do get a complimentary path. So and I would say probably just focus on the one path unless you're a real go-getter and want to have a bunch of different paths to follow. Then it also has the navigator on there, as we talked about. But you can also find lots of information about what awards you've gotten, what path you've enrolled in, what all your history is with Toastmasters. It's all here on the Toastmasters profile. So it's a great resource for keeping up with your program and enhancing your Toastmasters journey. Let me review part one, our orientation for new Toastmasters. Understanding the program was the first thing that we focused on, especially in using that navigator document that's either electronic or if you prefer, you could even print out pieces of it or all of it. We also talked about the importance of setting clear goals and making sure that if you're going to act on them, that they are smart goals. We also want to remind you about the promise that we made to ourselves and to our clubs as Toastmasters of what we were committing to do to make the best of our club and ourselves, as well as support our fellow Toastmasters. We also focused on how to understand your club's expectations of you as a club member and gave a lot of different suggestions on how to maximize your experience and offered you lots of resources that can help you be the best throughout this entire journey. I hope this part one was helpful for you. Next, we will move on to part two, club meeting roles, understanding those nine vital roles that help your clubs have efficient, effective meetings that can support you throughout your journey as well as the rest of your Toastmaster peers. I'm Bart Loser with Toastmasters District 55's Continuing Education Program. Thank you. <music>